Hello everybody, I'm Drawing Chaos and welcome back to Satisfactory 1.0. In today's video, it is not really part of the series. I mean, look at me, I'm flying here. Yeah, this is actually a special video. I've had some comments and they've asked me if I could go over how I built this lovely factory. Basically, uh, how it's made is the best way to put it. So the easiest way I thought I'd do this is two fronts. The first front is I have this available in the Discord. If you want to open this up, check where I'm at. Even go in and see my main base right down here and play around with it. You know, see how I have like the storage depot and all that kind of stuff. You're more than welcome to go check it out. All in the Discord under the save files. The second thing is I wanted to show you exactly what I did. I would say for 33 hours, but I never finished this in the nice little clip from one section to the next. So I think it's time that we start. And to begin, we got to go into what the most important thing to do was how to begin. And that was I needed this a radar tower. This radar tower allowed me to see every single one of the resources that was down here. So I took the resources that I had down there and I made a plan. And the plan was to take all this oil that's in this area, get it to one location and turn it into fuel using a special set of recipes. The recipes are, which is it? Recipe number one is an alternate recipe called heavy oil residue that takes the crude oil, turns it into heavy oil residue and polymer resin. The polymer resin gets thrown into these awesome sinks, but I'll explain that later. Second part is another recipe called diluted package fuel, which takes heavy oil residue and package water and turns it into package fuel. Basically doubling the heavy oil residue that you have. Then you just unpackage it and BAM, you got yourself fuel. So that was the plan. I scoured, wait, wrong button. I scoured this whole entire area for all this oil, plus the little bit that's over here, plus the little bit that's all the way like right down here. So once I had all the oil being brought into one location, I had almost everything that I needed to begin because there was one other piece of the puzzle package water and to get the package water to work correctly I needed water lots of it so that is why I decided to start with the water all right so let me show you how I built this water it was pretty easy all I did was to go with a four meter foundation I just basically zooped it across zooped it down and then I switched over to a one meter foundation. I went not the first one, but the second one aimed at the bottom and then just zooped it down. Now this allowed me to basically grab a water extractor and aim it on the foundation. It's also allowed me to rotate it. And let's see, we're on the second foundation and then aim in the center part. I could press H to hold it and I tried to get it as close as I could to the next part. There we go. Right like this where it's up against that. That is perfect. Then all I had to do was grab a foundation and this one right here. And that helped me get it really compact. And then I was able to go for the next one and do the basically the same thing. Uh, unfortunately, when you do hold these, you cannot nudge them. So unfortunately, I had to just basically press H and then press it again to unhold it and get it in place. Once it was set, all you have to do is hold control on the side and you can just basically snap to the side, front, whatever. It did do this weird thing where it kept like putting it like down under the water. You just have to aim higher or whatever and just make sure it's right. But other than that, that just got me the water extractors that I need and uh, I just had to figure out the design. Now the option I went with was vertical instead of horizontal. I could make eight rows of each and I had to figure out something that would work perfectly. Now here's the skinny. I needed 11,520 water per minute. Yeah, 
I know, not a very small number. Now, I was thinking about this. If I wanted to do 600 pipes, that was going to get me 19.2. So I would end up with 20 pipes. Uh, but I didn't like that because it's just such a weird number. And when you're kind of making symmetrical systems and you're trying to be really precise, you got to find that sweet spot. I was lucky enough to figure out that the sweet spot for this one is 480. That means I need 24 pipes. Now granted, putting 24 pipes all the way up in the world was not a stellar idea, and I could have made the package of water basically down here at the bottom, but I figured that there was another option, a water tower. So alas, when I figured out what water I needed, I came across this. This is my water tower. Say hello to a water extractor. It goes into a pipe that goes into a pump. Then that pipe goes into another pump. Then that pipe goes into another pump. Thus giving me the head lift all the way up here to where I need it. Then it comes back around and goes straight down into the system. Now granted, you could have put pipes for all this, or pumps for all this stuff if you wanted. That's completely your prerogative. But me, I thought that this would be great because then I wouldn't need a whole bunch of random pumps here clipping into each other or, you know, kind of ruining the design. So I have it coming over here, splitting, coming all the way down to the back of the system and going in. After the fact, I thought of, you know what actually would be really cool is if I could just take one of these and have it like, like this and then have this one come over or even like a little bit lower and then connect it to the system and then have like a straight pipe going all the way down. I'll probably redo that when I do the uh, design work for all this stuff, but yeah, it was a big pain in the butt. And as you can see, now that I took this off of here, all this will stop working and this whole system will crash. Lucky for me, I'm not saving it, so I don't care. Anywho, so that was problem number one solved, making the pipes for the water. So next up was taking the oil. And I decided on doing a group of eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this needs 20 per line. All right. So a full 600 pipe of crude oil needs 20 refineries to make it into heavy oil residue. So I got the blueprint Mark II and I built these refineries with this little stuff. And if I press R, you can see what is attached to this whole thing. Yeah, it was a pain in the butt. But because of the way that I had the oil coming in here, I figured it would be better just to have one side 20, another side 20, so 40 total, and then next to it on the other side was another 40. So I built the first floor, and then I was like, you know what, I'm gonna put like, here, switch this. I'm gonna put a foundation here, and then I'm gonna put a glass thing on top, right like this, and it'll be like, oh, it'll be so cool, you can like walk through here. But then I'm like, who the hell wants to walk down here? Nothing looks good down here. All the good stuff is up here. So I'm like, you know what'd be awesome? Let's just cut it up here, where you can actually walk in the middle. So the great part about this is, if I'm walking around here, I can just go in on these grates and everything, and I can just walk around. Now, it's not perfect, but it does help me do some other unique things. Like I put a metal beam on there, and bam, here's all my wall outlets. So I didn't have to make them go over there, I didn't have to make them go on the ceiling. Although someone might say this is a tripping hazard, but you know, you don't have to walk around it, so I wouldn't worry about it. All right, now that gets us down with the first floor. Well, most of it anyway. And I got all these refineries over here for all the six line, or 600 lines. And there was a reason for that, by the way. If you look over really closely, you have this over here that's a normal node, and then you have two in pure. If you power shard all this together, that's a pure 600 line. Then you have another one over here, pure 600 line, if you overclock it. Another one over here, pure one pure 600 line if you overclock it and then you have an impure you have a normal and another impure 600 line if you overclock it then you have this unique thing where you have a normal impure a over here it's a 
normal impure normal impure all right and then up here you have a normal impure and another impure so i thought of something really unique for this so for this next floor i had four pipes and you see there's a nice little splitter over here that is the normal and impure coming into here now why would it keep going this way well funny story i had every single nor normal impure hooked together in their own little system then the last extra impure that we have comes over here goes underneath and connects to all four of these and the reason for that is so we have basically the ability to have more oil than needed because i figured i could do 145 megawatts but the numbers would be just just off on how to build all the stuff it'd be like 145 refineries where this one's like 144 or something like that so it was like you know like i'm like, I'm like per perfection i would rather have the perfection of the numbers than just utilize every little ounce of what i had so yeah oh and there is one more little thing i wanted to showcase over here each one of these over here has a mark ii pump attached to it and yeah that one is a pure note that you just saw so obviously it only needed the pipe or the pump hooked up to that one whereas you have something like this over here where it's one two three hooked together in a junction then pumped all the way up so i don't have to use extra pumps or anything like that or screw up the system because you really don't want to utilize when dealing with fluid dynamics anything that will change the head lift in the system so for example this valve will change the head lift this pipeline mark two pump changes the head lift pipeline mark one changes the head lift but also, if we go in here, a fluid buffer will also change the head lift. So if I put a fluid buffer at this level, it will change the head lift right here and basically take away the pump that's pumping over. So what I did was these four at the bottom, they're fine. They're perfect. They didn't even really need the pump too much, but it helps. The one that goes all the way over here, fluid buffers on each one of them. Because the nice thing about this is the ones on the bottom need 20 per system. These ones on the top need only 16. That's right. Because we're not producing that final little bit of an impure node overclocked, we only need 16 refineries per line, including that extra little impure one that was like put into each one of them. So you understand. This also gave me room to put over here the awesome sinks. So all that plastic or polymer resin that's coming over here, straight into the awesome sink. And once I get drones, I can drone all this stuff to another location to be utilized for plastic and rubber later on. Or if I turn this into like rocket fuel and I need it, it's already gonna be here. But I wanted it somewhere out of the way that I was gonna be able to utilize it. So that's why that's there. And it's just, you know, basically this giant line going through and uh, there's two awesome sinks, like one for the bottom floor, one for this floor, one for the bottom floor, one for this floor, and then they'll take care of the four sections that are over here. So eight wonderful awesome sinks total. That takes care of the first main recipe. Now, when I was building this, because I was building this in blueprints over here for this, I built it in a group. So you have, Let's take off blueprint. So you have one empty one, then you have five, then you have another empty one. This gave us our blueprint of what to build and gave us a little bit of extra space to utilize any logistical nightmares. And the best part about it is if we go vertical, each one is seven. And the best part about that is that works for the fuel generators that are down there. And that works for going double up on the packager, packagers. Uh, it worked out so well. I can't believe it. But that takes care of one recipe. The second recipe is right over here in these bright yellow ones. These are making the 
package diluted fuel diluted package fuel however you want to say that depends on if you're dyslexic like i am so this little bit is also blueprinted so i put those in there made sure that they were going to just basically take this and then put the package fuel in there nothing too difficult about that once you get that one doing these not too bad the only thing was i had to figure out how many i needed so how many floors did i want to go to if i kept with the two floors i would have to do was it one two three six to a floor i'd have to do 12. and the problem i ran into is you'll notice that there's a little cut right here well that's for good reason turns out even though i thought i gave myself enough room hello mr rock in the way granted the height is fine but not this yeah and if i had gone higher and had my stilts up higher i could have built over it but we're also talking about the fact that i was gonna hit a rock eventually so even if i did the two layers it still would have been a problem Maybe if I curved it over there, that could have been something, but I, I was just playing by ear and I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to go with it. And I mean, this will work because what I decided to do was say hello to the system. Six, 12, 18, 24, 24 groups of eight. Yep. And there's a good thing about that because this is how it works. Let's take off blueprint. So the diluted package fuel has one good way of doing it. Normally what you do is you build a packager, then a refinery, then another packager. Then you connect the first packager back to the second one because the first one needs empty containers and water. We have water, it's not a problem. The second one needs heavy oil residue and package water. Package water from there, heavy oil, water, heavy oil residue from there easy the third one unpackages the fuel so it takes package fuel unpackages it gives you empty containers those empty containers come back around in the system so once you make enough containers you are golden so that's the original one i've done that one several times it's nice it's simple it's easy it's efficient so i wanted to challenge myself this time I wanted to see what it would be like if I built the refineries in one section and the packagers in another. And originally I was going to have the packagers like up at the top, but then I realized the height and then I realized, well, I have all the space over here and then it just it just worked out perfectly at first. <laughs> I made the water ones first and then I put the fuel ones on top. So the fuel had more of a head lift head start, basically. But there is an issue. There is a main issue. See, the way I showed you before, you can loop it around very easily. This one, not so much. So all eight of them come together on a perfect 480 line. Then that 480 line has to come through, go down and go into its very own group of splitters. But here's the caveat. Wherever you have the empty containers going in and the package fuel coming out, you have to have that package fuel going into its very own set of eight. And then those empty containers have to come back down into its very own packager. It has to be a closed loop system. I learned that the hard way because originally I did not have a closed loop system. And I had storage and the storage started backing up and we started getting major problems. So I did, when you saw me in the video, I tested one side. So all this was being tested. This side was not hooked up yet. So once this was working enough where I had the system running on its own, at least the 20,000 uh, megawatts of power I needed, I started working on this system. And I started redoing it to where it was perfect. I got this nice waterfall of empty containers or canisters, which looks really cool on this level. I love it. That looks amazing. And it lets you show or showcases where you're having issues. 
See, each one is supposed to be a perfect 480 line, so this line is having issues. Something's not right, so I need to figure out where that, that issue is. That's the best way I figured out how to do it. Okay, so yeah, I had that coming down, and then it splits off into each one that it needs to go into. I had to make sure each and every line was a closed loop system. All 24 loops. The nice part is, if you get the left side of the thing, the right side is just a mirror. So you, you kind of get a feel of what you're doing. So that's it. So that's it. And by the way, these are also blueprints. <laughs> yeah, it's just package water. It's just containers. Uh, container gets split off, goes down underneath. The water gets split off, goes on top, and that gets done. Then for the other one, which is the packager, it's kind of the opposite, you know? The packager, or the package uh, fuel goes in the center, and then it gets unpackaged into containers and unpackaged into fuel. Boom, done. Then what I did was I added a fluid buffer to the end of each one of them. And the reason for that is just a little excess fuel so as I'm building fuel generators, or I can turn it off for a little bit and let it fill up and it has less issues. Really good idea. So I had those coming in and going through the center and then going through there. This center part worked out so well. See, here's the thing. Originally, I left one foundation in the center because I was like, I'm just going to leave it empty so you can see all the way through or maybe I'll put something special there. Well, then I ended up putting this nice waterfall of pipes going all the way over, and oh, I just freaking loved it. It worked out so well, because I took the pipes from there and then went straight down and got to here, and then I'm like, well, how do I connect it if I have these all flat and these up like this? So I'm like, all right, well, just kind of like spaghetti them in there. <laughs> uh, but it does look <laughs> really, really nice uh so yeah water was set up like that right in the center and i think i'm probably going to get rid of like this cut part over here and just kind of make this better when i do the design work on it but that'll be next episode and then i had all these pipes coming down here 24 pipes of fuel so we had 11,520 fuel and if you divide that by 20 that is 576 refineries. Now, granted, I have a lot of space over here, but I did not want to build so many. So I decided to power shard them. So if you take that and you divide it by 2.5, that's fully overclocked, you still need about 234 and that 0 0.41 was pissing me off because why couldn't it just be perfect? Uh, so I'm like, okay, if I have 230, um, I, I, how, how would I divide that? Like, do I want to do the four? Because originally what I was thinking is, well, I have four floors, one on the bottom, one there, one there, one there. So what if I divided it by four? Shouldn't be too bad, right? 57.6. Well, that was annoying. Okay, well, what if I divide it by 5? 46.08. Okay, that 0.08 can be the one left that... Or it can just be a little extra fuel in the system. Doesn't matter. So I was like, I could build 46 per floor. And then I forgot about the giant cut into the foundation. Because <laughs> that killed four fuel generators. It could do it. Could build it on the other side but it was so much clipping. I couldn't do the clipping. I couldn't do it. So I decided to go with a eight by six. Now I could have gone a little bit further, but I wanted to leave some room because I wanted to build something crazy for the front. Something to showcase like the power plant. And I was running out of room with all these rocks over here. So I'm like, okay, well, what is six times eight? Well, good thing we have a calculator in here for these such occasions, which is 48. Okay, not bad. So I need 46 per level. So if I take out the four here, four here, that's eight. So that's 40 per level here. And then you have 48, 48, 48. 
and 48 and I'm like okay so then I was trying to do pipes and this is where I made the mistake so what do you say uh, 11,520 divided by 20 divided by 2.5 was 230 um, so that was an average of 50 <laughs> it was 50 fuel 50 fuel so if we divided by 50, you got the 230.4. So 50 fuel. So if I had a 600 pipe, well, that divides by 50 pretty easily, right? Well, here's the thing. There are 24 pipes of fuel. Okay. So if I was to take, say, one of them, that was 480 fuel per minute, and split it off into another four, I would get rid of one pipe, and make four six I would make four six hundred pipes I can do that to like four pipes and make like 16 of them fine but it still leaves me with like four other pipes that stay 480 and I didn't want to deal with that kind of shenaniganry so I'm like what am I gonna do and that's when I thought oh you know what's funny what if I change this up just a little bit what if I went to an actual secondary floor? All right. And what if, what if I went with 40 each? Well, that's 288. And if I divide that by six, it's 48 per floor. And I'm like, the number was there. So that's why before you build all this kind of massive stuff, test the numbers, see if you can find something that sounds better or works better in your favor. Because 480 worked so much better. And with 24 pipes, I basically had a group of four for each floor. So I just brought them down, hooked them up, bam. All I had to do was power shard two times each one of them. Except for this amazing floor on the bottom that is missing uh, eight total fuel gens. So this is the only floor that has three sharded ones just to get everything to work correctly. But it does. It does work correctly. I figured out a way. But mostly the way it's set up is you have one pipe coming in on the edge. That takes care of 12 of them. You have two pipes in the center. That takes care of this row of eight. And that takes care of this row of eight. The rest comes over here and adds four more into the system. This one comes here, takes four more in the system, and bam, there you go. No problem. Easy. So easy. So, yeah, that's how this was set up. Nothing too fancy, nothing too crazy. And if you look at it, it runs perfectly, or it did, until I mess with a whole bunch of stuff. Yeah. Oh, no, wait. Is this? Oh, it's still connected. That's right. I love that water's probably going to be an issue. There we go. Let's cut that down. Yeah, because I was like 145 now. See, that's what happens when you cut off the water. But originally, if I reloaded it, it'll be 144 evenly all the way across. No problem. But that is going to be it. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope this was informative. If you have any more questions, feel free to ask in the comments section. I'm more than happy to answer it. And feel free to download the save. Check it out for yourself. Or, you know, maybe use this as a starting point if you want to do something nuts or crazy and you don't feel like spending a hundred hours so far. Because, yeah, it's a hundred hour game save so far. And I haven't even decorated this. Because <gasps> you know I'm going to. Alright, everybody. I will see you in the next video. And enjoy. Bye bye Finger guns. Bye-bye.